What up? How's it going? First, let me start by saying, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If y'all subscribe, make sure to hit the notification bell. Shout out to all the new viewers. Shout out to all the subscribers. And have a Patreon with full-length early reactions to things like this. If you'd like to, check it out. Uh, the Saul part of it. Now, that was interesting. Um, the thing I cared about the most is, if you look back at it, th think about my reaction as I'm going into it. Like, why are you doing this? This is stupid. But by the end... Uh, uh, the business has to apologize. <laughs> they were about to do some fuck shit to the to the Acker guy. Okay, now, like I said, Acker did side what he side, so business business. But they was about to do some fuck shit, right? And now they got to break him off. A woman who they never paid <laughs> for, never pay, paid properly for the use of her photo. She got broken off. And all they got to do is apologize. And it's like, oh, that's it. Okay. Now, <clears throat> he goes back to the thing of, you know, everything that Kim said before <laughs> before she brought up marriage. Like, everything she was saying before she brought up marriage, it was like, okay, true, true. I can't understand that. <laughs> and then she brought up marriage. It was like, okay, let's see how this goes. Forward, uh, if I have the urge to not tell you something, then I've got to tell you. Right. Full disclosure. And it works both ways. It works both ways. What if I have the urge to not tell you something, but I tell you and you don't like what you hear? I just want to know what's going on. Am I late? Nope. Cool. Come on. Thanks for coming. Good to see you. Shall we? What's up? Is he all the witness? Want me to hold the rings for you? <laughs> oh, there's no rings. Well, I can fix that easy. I seen the clerk downstairs. Had a nice ride. Oh, it's like that. Then we should do it up right then for the rug rat. No, there's no rug rat. This is a legal arrangement. This way, if I get into trouble, they can't make her testify against me. You getting hits for that? She gonna be a McGill or Goodman? Wexler. I gotta go finish this. I do. And do you, Kimberly Wexler, take James Morgan McGill to be your lawfully wedded husband? To have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, till death do you part. I do. Saul Goodman, speedy justice for you. I've been calling you. Yeah, I had a busy morning. Go to lockup. Your client's waiting for you. My client? Who got picked up this time? Jorge de Guzman. Who the hell is Jorge de Guzman? What do you think? How does he plead? Not guilty on all charges. I'd like to schedule a pretrial hearing in six weeks, and I'm going to deny bond. Uh, Your Honor. That's my decision. The situation in Tucum Carey spiraled out of control, and we take full responsibility. Kevin, you chose me as your attorney, and that was the best day of my professional life. Yesterday was the worst day of my professional life. Nothing like that will ever happen again. Kim, you dropped the ball, that's for sure. And uh, with all your smarts, whole office full of associates and fancy degrees, you get rolled over by... I expected more. This fella, McGill or Goodman, whatever, he could do a whole lot better. Kim weird. I'll say 50 <laughs> like, but we gave it a shot. Uh, uh. <laughs> Rich, we can't. Then what? We walk on eggshells forever? Mm. What's our alternative? What? Yeah. Let's see the horse shit that happens this episode. <laughs> we counted it. Let's see how it right. goes. We owe you the truth. And the truth is, you ignored our advice. We said Mesa Verde should reconsider the site for the call center. You declined. And we advised you to leave that meeting when it became apparent that the other side was negotiating in bad faith. You declined. At every point, we gave you the best guidance we could. That's and true. And at every point, you chose to go your own way. <laughs> that is true. This only works out because he was so strong, uh, strong headed, as they say. Pause. If you continue to ignore us, then this is the wrong relationship. Whoever represents you in the future. I hope you're going to listen to them a little bit better. All right, then. 
See you on Thursday. Okay. He's a straight shooter, and he appreciates a straight shooter. <laughs> well, uh, I guess we'll get out of your hair. I want to say that Schweikert is looking like the son of a bitch. She did it. But what do you say? The daughter of a bitch. <laughs> she did it. Like, nah, it doesn't work that way, right? I feel like you should still say son of a bitch if you're referring to Kim in that, <laughs> in that position that you're swagging like, son of a bitch did it. Like, <laughs> I don't know, that just popped into my head. No deal. Here's the thing about going to trial. No, 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 no. No trial? No deal. You're gonna get me out on bail. Bail? That's... Get us to me with God, then. I'm sorry, I, d I don't, uh... You want to be a friend of the cartel? Time to get yourself a new motto. Just make money. This girl at work, she can't get her son to sleep. The kid's two years old and he's still tearing around the house at midnight. Hmm. Maddie was like that. Really? I love those pictures of him sitting on Santa's lap. Oh. That face. Mm. Grind his eyes out. Every year. I'm better now. What changed? Decided to play the cards I was dealt. <laughs> I was. I'm having the urge not to tell you something. I have a, a new client. He's uh, connected. I mean, he's a cartel guy from Mexico, pretty high up. Um, he said uh, I'd be a friend of the cartel. <laughs> friend of the cartel. <laughs> Ranch in Montana kind of money, like uh, private jet kind of money. Press conferences, TV news, the works. Do you want to be a friend of the cartel? No, no. I'm gonna put up a fight, right? Just for show. There's no judge on earth that's gonna grant him bail. I just I didn't want to tell you, so I thought I should tell you. I'm glad you did. Oh. Okay. A new step in the relationship. He told her something he was having an urge not to tell her. What you tell me. And when you say it, it's not up to you. Listen, you said, when Lalo's out of the picture, we'll talk about my father, right? Well, he's out of the picture. I disappear, they're gonna go after my father. He's gotta come with me. But no matter what I say with him, it's the cops or nothing. The cops won't solve this. Lalo called me from inside. He put me back in charge. He wants me to burn down the Poyos Hermanos. <laughs> And he's not out of the picture, is he? Right? Like, what? Contributing to an 18% increase in foot traffic at yeah, participating I, locations. I know where this, and this is. And a 12% bump in customer satisfaction. We know a good thing when we see or who it. Dealing so with. we are playing. We are very proud to introduce a new offering that will extend our product line while celebrating our traditional New Mexican culture. I invite you to taste our delicious. Spice Girls. <laughs> Fuck with curly fries. <laughs> hey, if he gave you the thumbs up, you know he fucking going? with it. Spice Girls. <laughs> I fucking stole Barbie's whole flow. Sweet action. <laughs> Lydia tells me Salamanca is in jail. This means you can continue construction? Eduardo Salamanca has been arrested for murder. Huh? However, even from jail, he creates issues. He ordered his men to burn down one of my restaurants. You're kidding. He's in jail. He can still do that. Oh, I'm afraid so. Shut up, dummy. Not exactly my area of expertise, but don't people get killed in prison all the time? I mean, shanked and shipped and whatnot. 
anything happens to Salamanca on this side of the border, the cartel will assume that it was my doing. It would mean war, war for which we are unprepared. Last year, the auditors came this close. One of them, a woman, I think she knew. Peter. I can't. They will catch me, and then it is over. Peter. I can't. Peter. Yo. <laughs> Gustavo, please. I, can't. I like Listen that they me. threw this, I, well, not through the CD here, but because we saw, when he saw them, the <laughs> police roll up, yeah. he was like, all right, I'm out. I'm going to head out. <laughs> the two of us, our backs to the wall. I will never. He had been waiting on that moment. What you did. <laughs> you are still the same man. You will do what is necessary. You stay strong, my friend. They put in work together. We have come so far. We are so very close. Gustavo? Prosit. Prosit. Prost. <laughs> We rarely see the see him show this. Saul Goodman, speedy justice for you. I need a word. A word, yeah. Uh, yeah, I have a word for you. A uh, tunnel, which is where I am right now. Sorry, I can't hear you. Maybe try again later. Coming. <laughs> hey, forget your key. He really didn't oh. look in the peephole. Fuck is you doing, man? Okay, yeah, come right Fuck in. Fuck are you doing? <laughs> Take yourself You had home. to know Mike was there. You representing Eduardo Salamanca, a.k.a. Jorge de Guzman? Uh, he's a client of mine, yeah, so? Yeah, I need you to get him out on bail. Yeah, look, I don't take marching orders from the man behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's better that you do. What's this? This is everything you need to do your job. He's going to let him. <laughs> hmm. Bitch, hit that shit. God damn. The fact that he has to keep even giving up so much because of the Salabakas. Even though he, you know, he battling them. He parrying. But he, he, he taking some hits, man. Dave Clark, the mysterious third party who's coaching your key witness. Do the dumb act for Parson. Please. I can't wait to see him rip you both a new one. Scumbag. No Scumbag alert. On about? <laughs> I'll call the librarian. I'll call the librarian. Is that them? Yep. <laughs> Who's that? It's got to be his family. Fred Whaley. Guy who died at the drop. <laughs> this man just saw. He's like, I don't. I have no idea who you're referring to. <laughs> Unfortunately, Your Honor, it seems a person unknown to my team may have interacted with our witness, causing her to call Detective Roberts and amend her statement two months after the initial interview. Yo. This only recently came to our attention, and we are vigorously investigating we ask that the court recognize him as a flight risk and as a danger to the citizens of new mexico oh. mr goodman furthermore the claim that mr de guzman has no ties to the community that's just patently false patently mr de guzman has deep ties to the city of albuquerque i'd like you to meet his family uh, that's his fiance and the love of his life beth mckinnon no your honor my client is the only <laughs> father that these kids have ever known. Just they depend on him. Given the circumstances, 
Mr. de Guzman should be granted bond. Your Honor, a sidebar? Considering the severity of the charges, I will set the amount at seven million, Ooh. cash only. Seven million. Yes, and I am so so sorry. I feel like you can like, do that. Yeah. See. <laughs> Thing is, I'm gonna need you to pick it up. What me? Mm -hmm. I'll call you. God damn! The fact that Jibby is in the middle of all of this. Cause see, this is Jibby right here. You feel me? He's like, what the? F hey, Jimmy. Howard, have you thought any more about the job? The job. Howard yeah. upgraded the tan. You know, um, <laughs> I'm still giving it some thought. It seems I've upset you, so offers off the table. You upset me. How, how'd you upset me? You want to know what's weird? It's weird to offer a job to a man and in return have bowling balls thrown at your car and prostitutes sent to your business lunch. <laughs> That's weird. That's weird to the motherfucker. That is weird. Listen to yourself. Jimmy, I'm sorry you're in pain. You kill my brother and you say you're sorry. Fuck out of here. Tell you something. The job offer, it didn't upset me. It amused me. Oh, you man. have no idea what's going on. You're a teensy tiny man in a teensy weensy little bubble. You look down on me, you pity me. Walk away. That's right, Howard. You know why I didn't take the job? Because it's too small. It's nothing to me. You can't conceive of what I'm capable of. I'm so far beyond you. I'm like a god in human clothing. Lightning bolts shoot from my fingertips. So he's in pain, huh? And Howard was like, this is beneath me. I'm out this bitch. About face and I'm out. The notion that because this man had to muscle out his brother to save his company while y'all two was rumbling, you gonna blame him? It was interesting to see Lydia, the German dude, and Gus inside the same room and for Gus to acknowledge that they had a backstory. He was like, our back was against the wall, Santiago. It's like, hmm? Okay. I don't know. What? All right. And then we also see that dude panic. Oh, we got to hurry up and get done with it. I can't. The money and blah, blah, blah. Because if you see me break your bed, my man just seemed resigned to, oh, shit, the cops is here? Well, it's about the time. I'm going to head out. Right? Like. So he had, he knew what was coming. He, he had been expecting it and waiting on it, right? It was dope for him to throw that in here. Then the other thing was seeing Gus's face. That man is like, I mean, he's stressed the fuck out, right? Like it, it's one thing. We know his stress. We get what's going on here. He's running multi-businesses. He has to break off paper to, to some other dudes. And, you know, he's dealing with a, a cartel. And as I said, he's parrying but he's still catching blows. He had to give up money. He had to, uh, you know, lose a, lose a building just now that was profitable. You feel me? And so what we're seeing now is how was he going to deal with Lalo? Now, the funniest thing about that though, is he, the look on his face that I said, it seemed like kind of stressed out. He got loyalty to that German dude, right? The way they were talking, he seemed loyal. But as we know, before all that money and all that shit, getting back at Salamanca was number one. No, no, no one around them could even imagine. And you would think as much as he was going back and forth with them, they probably just thought it was business, right? Because uh, he has that uh, monument to, to, to his boy, but... You know, him and Mike is the only one I see having a talk. And they cut off before they'd ever got to that, right? So most motherfuckers are not really getting that. And you don't have the ability of Don Salamanca to just go around just telling the story about what he did to him and uh right. So yeah, people may know, but they probably didn't understand that, yo, he's been playing the long game. We talk about a decade or a couple decades, however long. All right. Uh, Kim. Yo, some people bring Breaking Bad energy into Better Call Saul. I noticed that because I'm posting this to YouTube and I noticed that there's some of those type of comments in there. Um, I don't got no hate for her. I just want to see what they're going to do with her. You know why? Because of who she was, I, I wondered, well, what are they going to do with this character? 
Then they got to a point where, okay, we saw that she's sort of feeding off Jimmy's energy and it's really affecting her. And then we get to a point where she, I'm, I just assumed she was the, the adult in the room and I never expected I would react that way to what she was doing. Okay, boom, I'm over that really. Like I don't even, I want to get into this because I want to see how she's affected by something that I think we may see soon. So at certain point, I'm wondering, when is Jimmy going to have to reckon with what took place with his brother? And I made a statement. I can't remember how serious of a statement it was, but I do recall talking about how, oh, he's trying to keep Howard at bay because he's not trying to, you know, dig, like go back into that past. That would stir things up. Okay. Jimmy, uh, Howard finally realizes that. Right. And my man is like, okay, I'm, I'm taking the offer away. And you know, conversation goes on. He tells him, yo, you was doing weird shit. And the fact that Jimmy is this grown, even if you're one of those people who hate characters, like I said, bringing breaking bad energy to better call Saul, even if you hate characters and shit, he be doing silly shit dog. And him. And this is something that's rubbed off on Kim. When they get called out on the hustle, the punctuation to their hustle, this is the punctuation to it, is that when they're called out on it, they fight it tooth and nail. What? You calling me a liar? What? I didn't do that. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Howard read the motherfucker and said, huh. You know what I mean? He calls him out for not. And it wasn't even a call out as much as it was just him saying, yeah, you got to deal with that pain, boy. You dealt with that pain yet? Is pain <laughs> on the table? I want to go back. Remember Mike? Innocent granddaughter. She's just innocently talking about her pops. But his pain was accessed by another person. And you saw the outburst he had and what took place. Humans do that. That's how humans react. I feel like the more important thing, more than you hating Chuck, the more important part of the story is how much Jimmy loves Chuck. How much Chuck actually loved Jimmy. How much Jimmy respected Chuck and how much Chuck looked down on Jimmy. And how much their parenting had to do on that. Right. So now they're grown. And they're still dealing with that. So that's some family shit. That's not, that's not a, like a debatable thing. I'm not even sure. Right. Uh, like, like there's some shit that could be on judge Mathis and some shit. <laughs> it, it had to be different circumstances and some shit. Right. Uh, but, and the reason I'm bringing this all up is it's different. If he just hates somebody. Okay. You may have to deal with that pain, but you hated him. So, okay. But this is somebody he loved. He lost. He know him and his brother put things into the, you know, they created a course of events that got his brother out the paint. And so when he lashes out and blames Howard, Howard was just doing what he was doing to keep that company afloat. No, he has to keep that company afloat. That's his pop's company. You know what I mean? He tried, like he been asking y'all to, yo, settle y'all shit. Like, and so Jimmy lashes out. But he lashed out because that pain had been accessed by someone. And oftentimes, if the person's close to you, if there's something you could say that'll hurt them, you'll do that. You know what they say that should hurt people, hurt people. It, it, it's more complicated than that. But in this case, what happened was the pain manifested itself as him pointing the finger right at this guy. And I'm looking at Howard's face the whole time as he's walking. And as I said, he's like, he's unbothered and shit. But it seemed... The namaste shit is working. It's working. Who knows, though? Who knows? That may have drug him back down. But now let's go back to what I'm saying about him and Kim. I wonder if this is the point where Jimmy finds out he may have to deal with some stuff internally. And if so, how does that affect Kim? Because Kim has been feeding off his energy in every way. Yo. Oh, by the way, I want to say something. With the Kim character. The fact that Kim isn't a problematic character 
but she got her stupid ways is dope writing because if they do it in a certain way, it's just her being a uh, G by a dude and we would have a problem with that. Right? Like we'd be like, really this smart woman, she just got G. I mean, that happens in real life, but you know, when it comes to representation and shit, you, but on here, that's not what took place. This is her willingly opening herself up to Jimmy, accepting some of Jimmy in, in her. And like, I, I, when it comes to their relationship, it's, it's about her like that, especially at this point, because we could talk about what he's done and the influence he has. Right. Okay. Yeah. But when it comes to continuing it, when it comes to, she notices her flaws in herself. Remember shorty hyperventilating cause she was doing scumbag shit. So she knows the flaws in herself. So I'm looking at all this like, all right. When he does eventually deal with his pain and stuff, how does that affect Kim and his and Kim's relationship? And as I said, I think I said this very early on that, Yo, in real time, he's in Nebraska, right? So I wonder what took place and if he's there for that reason is somehow because um, we never see him breaking bad. Hey, this is a dope episode and it's just uh, I fuck with it heavy, man. But like y'all, y'all probably saw me and I'm looking because there wasn't really nothing to joke about in this <laughs> in this episode like that. Uh, but yeah, OK next episode.